Hi guys, it's Alyssa from Online Fabric Store. You guys have been asking a lot of questions on our dye videos, so we compiled a list of all of our FAQs and we decided to bring you a series of dye videos trying to answer your questions and help you figure out a little bit more before you start dyeing. So our first question was, what kind of dyes should you use on different types of materials? So specifically with RIT dyes, we have two different types of dyes. We have the all-purpose dye and we have dye more. So your all-purpose dye is going to dye natural fibers. It will dye your cotton, your silk, wool, rayon, and nylon fabrics. And then dye more is for your synthetic materials like polyester, acetate, and acrylic fabrics. So these dyes are going to do the same thing, but natural fibers are a lot easier to dye than synthetic fibers, so keep that in mind. And this will bring us into our next question, which is how hot should the water that you're using be when you're dyeing things? With natural fibers, you're gonna want the water to be between 140 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And for synthetic fibers, you're gonna want it to be between 180 and 220 degrees Fahrenheit or almost boiling. But honestly, I recommend that you should get the water as hot as you possibly can for the fabric that you're dyeing. If it's going to shrink on you, then maybe keep it on the lower end of the scale. The hotter you get the water, the better the end result is going to be, so keep that in mind. Also, with the dye more, you're going to have to use the stovetop method or use your washing machine with the hottest water that you can possibly get in it. Um, you turn up your water heater the night before you do the dye, and then remember to turn it back down before you take a shower or anything like that, and that's going to help you, but the dye more specifically really needs to stay hot the entire time that you are dyeing the fabric, so know that. So like I said before, synthetic fibers are gonna be a little bit harder to dye than natural fibers. You're gonna have constant heat. You're gonna to wanna to have really saturated dye baths. So there are still some things that Rick cannot dye. Fiberglass, spandex, and metallic fibers are not going to be affected by Rit dye. Also, fabrics with rubber backings, fabrics with special finishes, such as outdoor fabrics, are gonna be really, really hard to dye because they are treated with chemicals that make it so water does not penetrate the fibers. So if you're able to wash the treatments off of the fabric before you dye, then that may work, but chances are it will not. And lastly, fabrics that are labeled with wash with cold water only or dry clean only will shrink a lot when you put them into hot water. That's usually why they're labeled that way. So if you have never put an item into a really hot water bath, then I would not recommend throwing it in there to dye it. It's just gonna shrink it, unless that's what you're going for. But sometimes the results can be pretty unpredictable when you do that, so I would not recommend it. So another question that you guys ask a lot is, what if you don't have a pot that's large enough to dye something? And there are a lot of different things that aren't pots that you can use, especially if you're using all-purpose dye. Like I said, it needs to be a pretty hot dye bath, but if you can get the water boiling and then transfer it into the kiddie pool or whatever it is that you're using to dye your fabric, then you're golden. Like I said, a kiddie pool is awesome. You can also use a washing machine. That is something that RIT recommends on their website. On their website, they have step-by-step -step instructions on how to use your washing machine, how to clean it afterwards so you don't have dye left over in there. That's a really great method for dyeing larger items like sheets, curtains, stuff like that. You can really use whatever you want that's going to hold water. The all-purpose is unlikely to dye like plastic materials. It's non-toxic, so if you want to use a pot or pan that you usually use to cook with, you can. Just rinse it out after with soap and water and a little bit of bleach and you're fine. The next question that we're going to answer is how much should you dye at a time? So the answer to that is really dependent on the size of the container that you're using, the amount of water, and the amount of dye. The really important thing to remember though is that the water completely covers your piece of fabric and that it is able to move freely around. And if you're really concerned about it, I recommend using the washing machine method. But like I said, that's a really great way to dye a lot of things at one time. So a basic rule of thumb is make sure that your fabric will move freely so it will dye evenly. So something that you probably have noticed is that we often use either salt or vinegar in our dye baths. And that is because salt and vinegar help with certain materials accepting the dye into the fibers and will help the color be more vibrant. So for cotton, rayon, rami, or linen, you're gonna wanna use salt. And for nylon, silk, and wool, you're gonna wanna use vinegar. 
So another thing that people often ask is how can you cut down on bleeding of color out of fabrics? We use Color Stay dye fixative with anything that you use the all-purpose dye for. You're gonna wanna take the piece of fabric out of the dye bath and you're gonna wanna go straight from the dye bath to the fixative bath. Don't rinse it in between. Let it sit in the fixative bath for about a half hour and then rinse out your fabric like you normally would when you're dyeing. That's going to cut down on bleeding. That's going to help lock the color into the fibers and it's going to help your colors be more vibrant and stay longer. You can get the dye fixative with a spray bottle top. It really is whatever you prefer. You can use a fixative bath or use the spray bottle. Either way, whatever works for you. The next question that we get a lot from you guys is can you dye something that cannot be washed afterwards or can't be made wet and put into a dye bath? And the answer is kind of no, kind of yes. I wouldn't recommend this method, but I will tell you how I would do it because I know that this is a question that I get a lot. So RIP makes a product called Color Perfect. It is a spray dye, it is pre-mixed, so you don't need to mix it with water and it doesn't require any heat. But I did try this out because for this video, I wanted to give you guys an accurate representation of what Color Perfect is going to do for you. So I sprayed Color Perfect on this scrap piece of fabric that I had here. As you can see, it got a little wet. I wanted to see if the Color Perfect would rub off onto other surfaces when you touched it, if it would stay on the fabric, or if it's going to cause a problem for you. So obviously, as you can see in this corner, it is an issue if it does end up getting wet ever. Your Color Perfect's gonna kind of bleed, and for its intended purpose, that's great. It's meant to dye fabric completely without using heat, so it is really nice for that, but if you're not rinsing it afterwards, you're gonna run into problems like I said, if it gets wet, it's going to bleed, but also it will rub off onto other surfaces. So you can see that when you rub one fabric onto the other, that it's going to slightly rub off onto the other fabric, and over time it's going to wear away at that color, but if you're dyeing something like a rug or a carpet, you may run into some issues. So keep that in mind if you are going to use Color Perfect for something that can't get wet afterwards. So it's it's not what it's intended for, but in certain situations, it may help you. And to wrap up our video, we're gonna answer a question that you guys ask all the time, and that is, can you dye something that's a dark color to a light color? So RIT has this product called Color Remover, and it does not work on all materials. Polyester and blue denim, uh, they do not recommend this product for, but it is going to pull a lot of the color out of your fabric, and hopefully that's going to be enough for you to dye it the color that you want to dye it. So if you're starting with something that is dark blue, use Color Remover, rinse that out, wash it, and then use whatever color dye that you're trying to use. We have a tutorial where we use RIT Color Remover on a couple different articles of clothing. So if you have any more questions about that, check it out. And that wraps up our FAQs. If you have any more, let us know. We're going to be doing more of these dye videos. So we're going to try to get you the most informed that you can be about dyeing. Thanks for watching this OFS video. Like and subscribe to our channel for more crafting videos, tips, and tricks. See you next time.